haven't always been a comedian, you know. And uh, I'm from the ghetto, <laughs> ghetto USA, you know. So um, it wasn't that it wasn't big a big of a challenge for me to be able to play a character like that, you know. Satin is a character that we all familiar with, you know. Someone that is uh, funny and insecure and and the whole nine, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of like of a love, love hate type character. Like you love to hate him, you love him, but you hate him too, you know. Um, and I think that being in Detroit and you know having experiences from in my past um, have been able to give me a an opportunity to to dig into roles like this. You know, I'm always uh, uh, looking for ways to use some of the things that I consider pain in my past as a way to uh, incorporate for my characters now that I play. You know, the sad character is uh, someone, you know, it was my father, it was all kind of people that I've seen in the past. Hmm. So it was easy for me to prepare for this. Well, I was going to ask you, was it serious for you to play such a serious role without cracking a smile? But you really got to crack a lot of smiles in this role. I did. Because it was so different from the original. It did. I did. Um, it was written in a way where, you know, I played a comedian in this role versus last time I didn't. I mean, the, the last guy who played this role was not a comedian. So this gave me an opportunity to, uh, you know, I started off kind of funny. You know, and then I started off serious, and then I ended up being crazy in the end. So, that was fun. It was very different to see you in a more serious type casted role. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you want to delve more into? I mean, because you're so known for your comedy and just, right. you know, busting out. Is it something that you would want to do more? Well, no, definitely. You know, uh, being in this business, you can get typecast and pigeonholed. And, I mean, it's only so many day days I can play, so many Friday movies and different characters that I can play. I, no, don't get me wrong, I love those movies. Love to make people laugh. But, you know, there's more to me than just making people laugh. You know, I come from a serious background, you know, and, uh, you know, everything ain't funny in my life, so. I can't even picture it. Like, when you... <laughs> Think Mike Epps. I can't picture you not smiling. You think of laughing, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I do. I make people laugh. That's my gift. But, you know, I'm like a, the tears of a clown. I'm like, when I'm not making people laugh, I'm dealing with my problems. You know, and I'm not perfect. I'm not a saint. I have responsibilities that make me serious. And I definitely have a past that, that I tap into that, you know, that's very serious. How was your relationship working with Whitney in this film? Talk about like what the experience was like working so closely with her. Well, I think, I, you know, I definitely, I'm very blessed to have worked with somebody as great as she was. Whitney Houston was definitely an icon for all of us. You know, when I think of Whitney Houston, I think of the sun out in the 80s, you know, summertime. Great times, good people, good music, you know. Uh, and people don't understand she was just as great of an actress as she was as a, uh, as a singer. Uh, and you'll get a chance to see that in this movie where she did her thing. Um, do you believe that you can reinvent your career similar to how Eddie Murphy did in 48 Hours? Um, you know, I, I don't think about the reinvention wheel. I just I just try to make good choices. And, you know, if, uh, if me making good choices turn out to be the right thing, that's what I do. You know, I just look at it like, you know, I have to make a, the right choices. The next couple choices have to be right for me in order for me to be reinvented. I look at it from that aspect. Because if I look at it as I have to reinvent myself, 
I start thinking of the wrong components of making it, you know, happen. Uh, sometimes your situation can make you reinvent yourself. You get put in a situation and it's like, okay, well, I know I got to do this. So the reward of that is the reinvention. Salim talked about how you were following Whitney's casting. You were the first person casted after her. He knew that he wanted you to play Satin Struthers. Mm -hmm. And he said that he, he sees the layers of your talent coming out more the more he works with you. Um, um, do you have any other projects coming out working with Salim? No, I would like to work with Salim. He's such a great actor. I mean, a great director. He uh, definitely directed me in the right place in this movie, in a comfortable. And I worked with Salim and his wife on Jumping the Broom. And that was the beginning of someone believing in me. And I just thank him for believing in me. Um, talk about what you got coming up with The Hangover 3. What's installed for Black Doug? Oh, man, I'm playing another black guy in a movie. <laughs> black Doug, Hangover 3, this is the prequel. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, that's a big, that's a gorilla. That's just a big monster comedy movie that has been done and successful. And I'm just glad they thought about me again, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's a really big project to be a part of. It is, man. It's so big. I'm like, I'm, I have to pinch myself, like, still, like, dang, you're in a hangover. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, what about your role in Vi Vipaka? Vipaka. Vipaka. Yeah. Uh, I play another kind of serious role with Anthony Mackie, Forrest Whitaker, uh, Sanaa Lathan. What do you do? What's your role? What's your character? And a black guy again. No, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like to jinx my movie, so, you know, no, I, it's, it's coming out. Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I only have a couple more questions. You did mention the Day Day roles. Would you be open to or do you have any plans on working with Ice Cube again? Oh, yeah, well, you know, uh, Ice Cube is my big brother in the movie game. And, you know, if, if they decide to do another Friday and Business is right, of course. Whatever happened to the biopics that you wanted to do? The Richard Pryor movies? Uh, you know, politics and business, you know. Sometimes politics gets in the way of business. Projects get pushed back, but if it's meant to be, you'll see them come out, and there'll be a spiritual, you know, release. So, last question. Can you just talk about why it's important for people to come out and support Sparkle and go see it on the 17th when it comes out? I think people should come out and see Sparkle on August 17th because this is Whitney Houston's last movie. Um, and my fond memory of her being in the movie, she was great in the movie. Um, this movie was very well directed and produced. And uh, I just got to say, this is must see movie of the year family movie. Go check it out. Sparkle. Everybody wants to be somebody. <laughs> Thank you. Again, Thank this is El Castro with Mike Epps for BlackFilm.com. Thank you.